Well, good morning, Neighbourhood Prayer Network family. It's Saturday morning. I can't believe that we're now at Saturday. It only feels like just a couple of days ago. Well, actually, it was only a couple of days ago that we, we started Prayer Week. But actually, this Prayer Week has been one that I believe has been really formative for us as a, a family, as a ministry, um, because we've been reflecting on something that's raw and real. We've been thinking about the, the cost of living crisis and i just want to start to say at the outset if any of the things that we've talked about this week um that you want to uh, go and find out further information on for yourself initially like we've talked about debt we've talked about budgeting we've talked about food we've talked about mental health if there are issues that we've raised this week i just want to put on this saturday morning because this is a conversation where we reflect back on some of the things that god has been saying if you need to go and search out for yourself advice and care for yourself about anything that we talked about let me please encourage you to go and to do that because we're going to think about what god's been saying um this week and god's been saying much and that's why i'm delighted uh, to be joined um by uh, lisa who's been with me all week but i'm also delighted um this morning that we're uh, joined by Pastor Tunde Balligan. Pastor Tunde is our chair of trustees. Sadly, um, Carl this week has, has not been well. So I know some people have been in touch and gone, where's Carl? He hasn't been particularly well this week. Uh, and what's compounded the, the challenge is that uh, Carl hasn't had a, a, a voice for most of the week. And therefore, being able to record content for us this week has been somewhat of a challenge. But uh, he, he did say, you know what, we probably do need to sit down with Pastor Tunde anyway. So, Pastor Tunde, I'm delighted that you've uh, joined us uh, this morning for our, our lunchtime, um, our lunchtime, our morning conversation. We do have a lunchtime conversation, 12.30 today. We have a lunchtime conversation. It's our final lunchtime conversation. I'm chatting to Rory from Green Pastures at 12.30 today. So uh, watch that conversation um, and that's our last conversation. But this morning, Saturday morning, it's a great time just to make some space to just simply sit there and say, what God, what has God been saying? What do we need to shine a light on in terms of having our Holy Spirit highlighted? What is it that God's saying that we need to, to move forward on? But firstly, uh, Pastor Tunde, I'm going to ask you because, you know, your 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 day job, uh, for want of a better phrase, is actually a, a, a pastor of a local church in, in Uxbridge, or the uh, senior pastor at uh, Kingsborough Centre, which is uh, a church that is very much, I, I, I can see it from the things that I know about Kingsborough, from the conversations that we have, very much a church that's seeking to support uh, churches um, across Kingsborough, but also individual Christians across Kingsborough to respond to this cost of living crisis. So my first question, Pastor Tunde, is how's it going? Well, um, good morning, listeners. And um, it's really good to be here with us this Saturday morning. Um, first of all, I would like to also um, say a big um, thank you to Adam and Lisa for an excellent week so far in all that you have done for the prayer week of the NPN has been um, marvelous. I mean, I've not been able to go through most of the most of the um, recordings and most of the materials that have been shared, but the little bits that I've gone through, they are massively excellent uh, um, things. And I do want to say thank you for all you do for the neighborhood prayer network, and especially for all of our neighbor, I mean, all of our members all across the nation god will reward you adam you said you said carl didn't have a voice all week wow this is this is carl's voice i mean an extension of the fact that we are all just you know being able to to rebound that voice um that that call i mean that that god has given to npn because it is not um one voice or somebody's voice it is one voice from god through all of us and the expression of god in diverse ways i'm so delighted to be part of this discussion this morning and i pray that god will bless us yeah coming back to your question adam um i'd just like to say that the best way to describe this is to say um it's been massively devastating for many people in the way that the cost of living has come across because 
We have barely come out of all that we've been going through for the past 20 and a half years, um, leading on to the war in Ukraine. And then bang, we are here with the cost of living, which is been all interlinked into one another. And I want to say that I have seen people who have been genuinely impacted in a negative way, but that is not the whole story. I've also seen people who have also been positively impacted in this is because the, the, there are two phases to, to this when we look at it from a Christian perspective. When you look at the cost of living crisis, um, in the Bible terms, it's a time of famine. And what we notice in the Bible is that the time of famine is a time of God blessing his own children. So I have seen people who were well prepared for the time of famine in the way that they have conducted themselves in their relationship with God, in the way that they have conducted their diligence about life. And for such people, some of them have been very well shielded and also been covered. And that is the promise of God that when we go through this situation, he said he will protect people, share testimonies of immense blessings from God, even in this time of difficulty. But that does not take away from the fact that there are so many people who have been really, really affected negatively. And of course, it is the duty of all of us to rally together and see how we can make sure that we be there for such people. I think that's my first hand reaction to that. One of the things that was very interesting on uh, Wednesday, Samantha Craven spoke from TLG to us about the fact that, you know, TLG did some research back at the beginning of the summer that said, you know, we're, 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 we're getting very nervous about the, the crisis. And uh, Gareth Brown, when we did it as Neighbourhood Prayer Network, did our first kind of shining a light conversation, talked about the fact that it's, coming in waves this uh, cost of living crisis have you noticed uh, pastor tunde in in the pastoral work that you do uh, in kingsborough that actually uh, and in uxbridge that actually it is very much like waves so some people were instantly affected by the cost of living crisis but now you're seeing more and more people um being affected and therefore um nobody is uh, nobody is immune uh, we're all suffering it in different ways is that what you're what you're seeing as a pastor I mean, I'll, I'll borrow that, um, that, that word you, you use. None of us could ever really be immune um, from the impact of, of a thing like this. It's hugely across the board. I mean, not only in Axbridge, it's right across all the cities of the United Kingdom, but guess what? It's all across the world because this is a time of a global, a global impact negatively on the on the market situation and you know this market situation interlinked with is is a, is a natural impact on most countries altogether so so the, of course we are all at different levels of life various levels of life and um until until we get to a certain level um what takes somebody to goes down to go down is not what is going to take another person to go down it just it just depends on how bad things get i mean i remember many years ago i mean one of the ways that god is helping us as a church as a local church um to to support people in our community is through running um the food bank which actually is the first food bank in london um started in 2009 um and w when food bank started then it was meant to help people who were not really destitute, people who know that they are homeless, but people who are just about to fall below the line, below the poverty line. And it was meant to be a system that was there to help them catch them before they fall even deeper down below the poverty line. But what have we seen today? It has gone beyond that. You see, people who were managers, people who have good jobs, good careers, have fallen even lower than before the poverty line. So, so what I'm saying is that nobody is really quite immune from this cost of, I mean, high cost of living crisis. All of us have been impacted, at least 
denied of something that we will have enjoyed because you have had to adjust so the reason now the word the catch word now is adjust and budget for so many things that you'll have ordinarily done without blinking Tunday um we had some um representatives of the Trussell Trust come to our church obviously they oversee a food bank network and um, one of the things that really impacted me was um how people were saying can we have cold food because they they couldn't necessarily heat it yeah. um and I know that some food banks have started putting together packs of food uh, for those who are in that situation and so um I wondered whether that sort of request was at your food bank or, or whether people are starting to ask for different types of foods because of the cost of heating them yeah yeah I mean obviously I mean we've always had that because there are people who uh um when we hand them the food in bags the first thing they do is they, they put it down and they scavenge through everything and you see them put this aside i don't want this i don't want this i don't want that i don't want this and it only takes you to ask them one or two questions why don't you want that oh i've got no microwave i've got no heating i've got no how to heat it so i'll just, just take what i can eat. so that has always been there but what we have found out is that we now have many more such people. We now have many more people who are saying, I can't take that because I won't be able to eat it. And why give it to them if they're not able to eat it? So so I think it's it's a massive impact on not just on everybody, but in the way a man it has come across. And there have been some wonderful initiatives out there. I mean, in Oxbridge, there's an initiative um, to just um, for, to use church halls and church environments um, to, to invite people to come in and who cannot heat up their homes during the day to just come bring what they might like to heat. There's a microwave there. And um, not that you can do your cooking there, but at least microwave, you can just warm up what you want to eat and then be able to eat it. And then some of that, some other things are provided. So I think it is a great heat on so many people in a way that we have never seen it before. And we just have to pray that God will help us to navigate through this and be of a real support to people. One of the things that Lisa's been sharing on our evening Zoom calls is actually the fact that uh, God's been talking about the, the we, not the I, the we, not the I. Lisa, just for those that haven't been on our evening Zoom calls, what's God been saying to you about the, the we and not the I? Well, it was, I love it, Adam, when you set me a challenge and you set me the challenge and the challenge was to uh, explain what faithful in prayer meant. So that took me on a great Bible study through um, chapter 12 of the book of Romans. And I would, I'd encourage everybody to, to just, just spend some time to consider what it means to be a, uh, a living sacrifice, but also the whole focus on love and what that means uh, together as the people of God. And um there, there just came a point as I was looking at, at this whole chapter where um, I felt the Lord was saying, you know, you could easily, and, and when we say faithful in prayer, we, we might have a particular image of what that means. And, and we can so often, because um, life has so much going on, we may find that we don't feel like we're meeting what we think is what we should be doing. And we can feel quite condemned, if I'm honest with you. And and um, I, I just felt the Lord was um, his love and his grace is so good. And he just loves, um, loves us so much and he doesn't want us to be condemned. Um, but there was this sense of that invite and that sort of ongoing invite to spend time with him, which is prayer. You know, having a conversation about the things that really uh, we're concerned about, but also thanking God and worshipping him for who he is. Um, but they the, the what happened though, as I looked at it, was I realised that it was a, this was addressed, and it's like a framework for be faithful in prayer. It was addressed to the people of God, so therefore it isn't about the I and what I'm doing in prayer. It's it's the we. What are we doing together in prayer? And and that just made me look at you know it's about honouring each other. It's about being devoted to each other. Um, it's about keeping the fire going in our heart together whatever that means in our church, um, in any type of networks of prayer that we're part of. And, um, you know, share, and then it follows on, the overflow of sharing of God's people who are in need. So it is, 
really looking out for each other in this time. So um, I think as we're moved to pray, we're then moved to respond and God changes us so that we can be the change that we're praying about. So together, together. And I think God commands uh, that blessing when we, we are in unity together. So I think this is the excitement about Neighbour Prayer Network. You know, we've got a heart to pray for our neighbours and streets together because the vision is that every street would be covered in prayer. Um, so I, I, I think that's that's the thing that stirred so deeply in my heart. You know, I'm getting excited about it. And the other thing is, I, I, I just love the idea of looking at what the, the, I looked at all the words, all the phrases where it said be in front of it. So we had be transformed, be devoted. We had uh, be joyful in hope. We had be willing to associate with people of low position and be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. And that really was the other layer of like, this is what is God is asking of us as God's people together to be those things. Because I believe if we are like that, the world would know that we are God's disciples by the way we love each other. But we're also called to not only do that, we're called to love our neighbour as ourself. Hmm. And when we get that, but, you know, the whole thing around that is, we need to receive God's love into our hearts. Know God loves us in order then to love as, as, as God is calling us to love. Because in our natural, we may struggle to love some of our neighbours. But by God's grace and goodness, we can love because he pours his love into our hearts. So that's how we can be faithful in prayer, because he is faithful. He loves us. And because of his love, we want to spend time with him because that is a beautiful place to be. I love that. But I, I have to say, the fact that you've now gone on video saying that I set you a challenge, I'm glad that you <laughs> responded, to, responded to the challenge because actually I know from those of, uh, who've been in touch this week they and, and, and the fact that we've seen likes on the, the Facebook page and the Facebook group and hundreds of people saw the, 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 the devotion that you wrote for us on Monday around being faithful in prayer. And I believe that there is something that God wants to just remind us of of that so thank you to for rising to the challenge and thank you for the the different ways um in terms of written down but also our seek meeting on tuesday lisa that you've you've explained that and i, I really wanted uh, those that uh, maybe haven't been with us for all of the week to just hear that piece about the the we and not the i because i think that's going to be more important as we we go forward because you know we're we're, we're not out in the woods and there's going to be a lot of this i was chatting to a, a ministry leader who was saying we need to be ready to be responding to this for at least the next 12 months, both as individual Christians, but also as churches. So it's not a short term thing, but it does um, lead me to want to, to ask Pastor Tunde two questions. My first question is this. When I was on TWR this week, I was asked the question by James Maidman Fullard uh, about whether prayer around the cost of living crisis is actually a soft a soft touch thing so it means that we then don't have to go and do any action um and i i i i've been joking to people this week that i think i gave the right answer which probably means that i'm at least in the job of, of uk director of neighborhood prayer network for at least another week unless there's something past the sunday that uh, uh, you know that i don't but do you think sometimes we do just see prayer as you know, a cop out rather than actually something that we actually need to do. You know, there are lots of ministries talking about the cost of living crisis at the moment. But for us, it's been the theme of our prayer week. It's been the theme of our prayer week. Um, Pastor Tunde, how would you have responded to the question? Is prayer just a cop out to stop us from action or does prayer mobilise us to uh, action? Absolutely not. I, th I think prayer, prayer is in fact, prayer is in fact the starting point because what we do with prayer is prayer engages us with God. Prayer connects us with the one who knows what we don't know. Because what is going on now, God has a solution. God can fix it. However, God says we should engage with him. We should pray unto him. We should ask him and he will guide us. He will teach us. So it is not a case of doing one um while we forget the other as in praying and forget to do the work it is actually no the fact that both of them are tying together 
however there's there is the one that should should come first i want to say that in my own understanding and in the way that i've been brought up and i've run or run my life over these many years is the fact that we start with prayer when we start with prayer god can teach us what to do he can guide our minds can guide our hands he can guide our intellect our relationships in what we ought to do to get the result that he wants us to get don't let us forget that we don't know tomorrow because we're not preview to what is going to happen tomorrow but when god when we start with god god can give us the insight into what to do and what to get ready and be prepared for for tomorrow so it is to know the 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 the, the, the way a manner to interject them into our life so i really believe that prayer is very essential in fact it is the most essential thing the problem lies where people just pray and then pray and then pray and then pray i don't work because prayer without works is certainly of no good but works without prayer is even more terrible because it's just a case of um just toiling and then doing works itself that's a, a really good answer. I wish I'd have come up with that when I was talking to TWR, but I think you're absolutely right. My second uh, question, Pastor Tunde, was, you know, back to, back to the we, not the I. Actually, you know, quite often as Christians, we can be very good at living in our boxes. You know, we're conducting this conversation by Zoom because we can't be together, but we're in our little boxes on our screen. And I actually think as believers, we can... We can live in our individual boxes. And actually, I, I think one of the things that I, I sense God saying to us um, as we move forward from, from prayer week is actually we need to not be in our boxes. It's the, it is the we, not the I. Mm -hmm. But as a, a local church leader, I want to ask the question, you know, how, how? I was going to ask you, is it going to be? But I know what the answer is. How? How do we move forward to make sure that we... We, we get to a place where actually Christians come together from across different traditions and streams um, to basically say, do you know what? We want to be the church for the people of Uxbridge. We want to be the church for the people of Bedford. We want to be the church for the people of Warrington. We want to do that. And we want to not be in our boxes. And therefore, that means that Christians are going to need a greater level of cooperation. As a church leader, how do you encourage uh, people within your congregation to, to live with that we, not the I, but also as a church leader? Yeah. How do you say that it's important that as leaders, we're not just not being we're not just focused on our church or our fellowship, but actually we're, we're, we want to bring good to the whole of our town, cities and villages. Can I just um, pay tribute to um, Carl at this point? I mean, Carl is written a beautiful article for us um, over this um, cost of cost of living crisis um, that is titled, we, we can pull through together, you know, we can pull through together and going through it. And it's going to be a cover story in, in a monthly magazine called the Connect Magazine here in Oxbridge is a community magazine published by by Kingsborough with with all the um, different people from different churches all in the community and and that that article I believe is going to be an eye opener in the sense that it is not what you can do it is what all of us can do together while we all maintain our individual and play our individual roles where we are positioned. If you look at if if you look at a, a, a chain that is a length of chain that is hung there, a length of chain is is it comprises of little rings that are connected together. Now one of them cannot be the chain. One of them is just a ring in the chain, but it is the collectivity of all of them linked together that brings about the chain. So we are all rings individual, and that's why. In Hebrews 10, 25, God, the Bible encourages us not to neglect the assembly of believers, the assembly of coming of people coming together, praying together, serving together, worshiping together. It is so essential that while we are learning to maintain our own corner, 
we must extend beyond that corner to connect with other people because you might think what you're doing is the best wait until you see what god is doing through the next door neighbor you find out that what you are doing is even kindergarten compared to what god is doing with them so it is so important it is so essential to know how to connect and i want to also use this to salute the the confidence and the boldness of our present mayor in Hillenden, um councillor um becky becky uh, hager kaikitis um she is such a remarkable christian a believer to the core and who does not mince what about her faith in god and serving jesus christ and one of her dream is to gather the churches together to pull the churches in our community together and and i serving as her chaplain we've been working together praying together to make this to come together and there have been a lot of response towards this this drive i mean in july we had a meeting in her parlor of church leaders who came together to pray together to talk together how can we minister and be of service to the three hundred thousand people in our borough and we're still furthering that we're going to be having the second of such meetings not too long from now and we believe that god is doing something unique so as a church leader in Hillingdon, i personally share with our congregation at kingsborough to say that we are not the only one god is not only using us we are part of the jigsaw and let us do our part well because there's a global picture there's a broader picture of what god is doing and if we see it the tapestry is so beautiful it's awesome and it's so wonderful you bring out a very different uh, dimension into that, uh, Pastor Tund, and probably that's why maybe in the absence of not having Carl around, actually you bring a really helpful perspective. Actually, there are Christians who are serving in political uh, roles in councils as councillors, um, as mayors, as deputy mayors across the country, and actually maybe we need to pray for them across Absolutely. our country. Absolutely. across the family of nations you know there would be more becky there would be more councillor beckys you know yeah. the, the the deputy mayor here in bedford uh borough is 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 a, an anglican vicar and so you know the role and the place that they have we need to pray so that we can bring church and the council and others together so that we can say look the church is here and we're ready to step up and that then helps us say you know we have something as 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 the church to contribute to what's going on in our local in our local community so pastor tunde um we do um for those that uh, are part of our our seek will know each week that you that we have been praying for you in the work that you're doing uh, with councillor becky as as her chap chaplain in uh, in uxbridge Oh, and, and again, this morning, I just want to say we are going to continue to keep praying for you. But actually, as we we have this conversation uh, on this Saturday morning, I think we need to be praying for for more of what's going on in Uxbridge to be popping up in other places. If you know MBN family of things that are going on in a similar vein to what uh, Pastor Tunde's just described, um, that you think, you know, it would be good for MPN to be aware of and to pray about. Get in touch. The inbox is always open. UK director at neighbourhoodprayer.net. UK director at neighbourhoodprayer.net. And if it, either that comes through to me, but uh, as Lisa and uh, Carl know particularly less, uh, Pastor Tunde, uh, but uh, they know that if it's not for me, and it's not the thing that I'm being called to do. I de definitely pass it on to others within the leadership team and others within the core family so that we can we can stand together with you uh, in, in, in prayer. But I, I really love the fact that you remind the people at Kingsborough, Pastor Tunde, that as, as great as the church is, and I know you are doing some amazing work, you are not the only one. And therefore, we need to live in that uh, kingdom spirit, that kingdom spirit. Yeah. One thing I just want to add is to say that I cannot emphasize how so important it is for us to encourage the church to pray for people in public office. It's so important, it's so needed because every single they make important decisions that affect your church, 
important decisions that affect your children, your family, your home, your career, and everything that concerns you. And if we don't pray for them, we don't expect them to make all these good decisions. That is how we place them before God. That is why we must go ahead and pray for them on a continual basis. Not because they're in your party, not because they are you believe in them or you like them. It is because it is your duty. The Bible encourages us to pray for our leaders, the counselors, the MPs, those who are in public office, in whatsoever, the, the teachers, the head of school, the school governor, because they are going to impact on the life of your children. It's so crucial, it's so important. And if we do this good enough, God is always a prayer answering God. He will answer us and he will grant us the result of all of our prayers. Important role that we play as people in our community and i know that god honors this and he will do it in your community as well as you can begin to do it god bless well pastor tunde has uh departed but lisa we are we're still here we're we're a bit hardcore we're we're continuing what did you do you make from what pastor tunde said uh just towards the end of our conversation there about uh, the importance of actually praying for um, our counsellors and our church leaders and that interact. What do you, what do you think we need to to, to pray? I, I think they need wisdom. They need great wisdom in these times. And um, I'm, I'm particularly focused um, on a scripture which talks about God being our stability in these times. And in 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 that scripture, it speaks about um, God being our wisdom. And so we need to pray for the wisdom um, and the counsel of. Um, our Lord with these counsellors, even if they don't believe and trust in Jesus, uh, they you may have another faith even, but we want them to be able to serve their communities so that the communities are, are cared for and they have the best resources and the, the policies that are going to touch lives and, and, and obviously help people that are in poverty, help those who are going through the cost of living crisis on the ground. So um, I think there is a danger if we're not careful um, that we can be very negative about our politicians um, and then it shuts down our prayers and it shuts down our engagement and I really believe that in this time we really do need to be persistent in prayer and we have to and if we're struggling with our views on politicians we need to come before God about it and say we need your heart Lord for these people because you came to love the world and that includes politicians and give us your love so that we can pray for them and that we can engage with them and they're human beings they need encouragement we can always go in with the negatives and we do want change perhaps in our context around the things that concern us but let's also encourage them where they're doing things right um because that is what god's people should be about they should be about the father's business and you know our father um wants our you know what's happening in heaven to come down to earth so that the good things and the blessings that are there can also be there to bless those who are in any type of political office. I think you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. We need to pray wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. And I think sometimes we we think it, but we need to 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 not just think it, but pray it, because actually God, as you say, God is the stability in our times, and we we need to pray for wisdom. You know, we ourselves may not necessarily be involved in those conversations as as Christians even as, as church leaders, but actually we need to still pray for God's wisdom. We need to pray for God's wisdom. One of the things that we, we chatted about uh, yesterday in our newsletter was about the fact that this is the weekend where we're encouraging people not just to have had head knowledge this week, but to have gone, I'm going to step up out the seat and I'm going to do something um, about it. Why do you think, Lisa, because you are our director of prayer ministry so uh, hopefully this is a question you'll be able to answer but why do you think it is important particularly as we come towards the end of a, something like prayer week that people actually do go and prayer walk their communities well um prayer walking obviously i'd say is important at any time um, um about anything that's on our heart but this particularly this week we've been focusing on the cost of living crisis so um, to, to go out of your home or if you're not able to, to sit and reflect on your community and to pray for your neighbours and what they are going through 
I believe is so, so important. Um, there are things happening behind the closed doors on our streets um, because of the impact of the cost of living crisis. And if it's not in their home, it's maybe uh, within their family further afield, or it, it could be uh, people they know at work. It, it, it could be people at church. It could be people um, in all networks, sporting networks. And, and therefore, we need to be praying because um, it's as we pray that actually we see the breakthrough come. And I also believe that as we pray, God gives us um, a heart to respond, to be part of the answer to our prayers. And as we walk the land, if you're able to physically walk the land, we sometimes bump into people. We meet people along the way. And we never know what conversations may come out of that. And it's just that listening ear. It's about being there. It's about journeying with people. And it's about getting to know people more. Mm. And, and that is the heartbeat of Neighbour Prayer Network. It is about uh, loving our neighbour and taking the time to get to know them mm. and for us, uh, for them to get to know us um, so that together, and I think the responses are in our communities as well, join in with the good things that are happening in your community. It doesn't always have to come under a church sort of label. It can come in other places that God may lead you. So be open um, to perhaps going and, and standing in support in some way that will help others through the cost of living crisis, maybe for a charity uh, on the ground or something that's happening within your uh, local community you come across and you say, yes, that's something I can do and I can make a difference there. So um, I, I just think prayer walking to me is the place where it's a catalyst for lots of other things, but we also know that the prayer of a righteous man or woman is powerful and effective. And in this time when so many things seem to be going wrong, we really do need to be praying uh, for God to sort of come into those situations that are so desperate. So the light of Christ can come into the darkness and that people can go forward together and they can support each other and care for each other and love each other. Um, because I think that is the only way through together. I think you're absolutely right. I wrote the piece around the, the text that many of you will have read from uh, Rachel, but you've just stirred me to make sure that uh, I continue to keep prayer walking. And you know what? For some, it might be actually going out and physically doing it. For others, it might be sitting in your chair, as you've said. But maybe for some, and I wonder if this is you, and I kind of put my finger, in, you know, just to, to say maybe th maybe this is you. Actually, you need to have a persistent part of prayer walking this weekend. Maybe not just doing it once, but maybe doing it a couple of times. Maybe once in the early hours, maybe once, maybe once uh, during the day, but maybe once when you go, do you know what? I'm actually going to have conversations. We had an email in this week from um, somebody within the MPN family who said, you know, I want to go out and prayer walk my community this week. And I also want to be able to to ask God to give me people to bump into um, so that I can talk to them and engage with them. And sometimes, as this person says, sometimes they speak and sometimes they don't. But actually, I just pray that God would give me opportunity. Maybe that's something that God is calling you to do, not just kind of being like this when we pray walk, but actually like that as we pray walk. What's going on around us? As we pray, what might this be the weekend uh, that God is calling you to, to do something? Lisa, you and I are going to be together in Manchester towards the end of the, the month because we've got our A Mile with Jesus uh, conference taking place. Tell us a little bit about what's happening. Well, um, we're, we're, we're coming together and there'll be different people we'll be sharing. Uh, we are so obviously there to exhort and encourage praying, um, doing a mile of Jesus in your community. And this year it's a physical in-person uh, gathering and it's in Swinton. Um, all the details can be found through www.amilewithjesus.com. You are welcome. You are invited. If you're not able to be there, pray for those who do gather. Um, and and obviously we will be encouraging through our network uh, prayer walking um, during that time so that you can join in in your own community, uh, even if you're not able to be there in person. So uh, we always look forward to the gathering that we have. And we've had this for many years now, a mile with Jesus, where people can come together and we can you know, be encouraged around prayer walking in our communities. 
Um, so I'm looking forward to being there, Adam, with others and looking forward to uh, all that God's going to do through the fellowship and, and obviously focusing on prayer walking as we also on that day go out prayer walking and please prayer walk. It will be on the 29th of October. So put it in your diary um, and, uh, you know, prayer walk where you are. And if you're able to join us, you say, please, please come along and find out more through that link, www.amalwithjesus.com. Thank you, Lisa. We are literally coming into land. It's been a long conversation, but actually I think it's one which, if you've heard only bit of it, go back and watch it, break it down, stop, pause, come back. Uh, but I think there's been some stuff in here that I think God is, is wanting to say. That's why um, we wanted to, to do this, and particularly on a Saturday when people have time over the weekend, the pace of life is different. You might have that opportunity to just stop start and ask God what he's saying to you as you you listen to what uh, myself and Lisa and Pastor Tunde have, have shared uh, this morning. Tomorrow is Neighbour Sunday so I'm delighted that uh, we're able to partner again with the Christian charity Faith in Later Life, faithinlaterlife.org. Um, Jamie Hill, uh, the CEO of Faith in Later Life, recorded one of our conversations uh, that we've been having this week, one of our lunchtime conversations. Go back and watch the video. Maybe that's what you need to do um, on Neighbour Sunday. Um, we'll be doing some interviews across the BBC. I'll be across the BBC local radio network uh, to, uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, uh, so come in, if you're up bright and early, come and follow where I am. I'm delighted that if you listen to UCB One's uh, Sunday breakfast programme with Vicky Gibbons, somewhere between six and ten on Sunday morning, you might get a bit of a surprise. And the surprise is a nice surprise. This year, we're privileged that Bishop Mike Royal, Bishop Mike, the General Secretary of Churches Together in England, has provided us with a short reflection. Um, it's available both as a video, as an audio, um, but it's also going to be played out on Vicky Gibbons's Sunday breakfast programme on UCB1. Um, we're delighted that uh, our continued partnership and friendship with UCB enables them to uh, share that reflection. So there'll be thousands of people who won't have known what we've done this week who will hear that reflection from Bishop Mike uh, tomorrow morning on the breakfast programme. So do uh, listen uh, to that. We've got one final prayer time tomorrow evening, and that will then conclude our seven days of prayer. But most importantly for us tomorrow, the, the peace is friends that uh, you would pray for your neighbours. If you're leading the intercessions in your church tomorrow, add a prayer for praying for your neighbours, not tokenistically, but against the backdrop of maybe what you heard. Maybe, you know, as you have engaged with the material this week, there's others in your church that you go, do you know what? I need them to be aware of some of the things that God's been speaking to me about. Invite them. Invite them to look at the, the, the material that we've done this week, but also invite them to look at the, the, the material that we've got on the website. It's all available. There's a playlist now of the videos that we've had all week on YouTube. So if you go into YouTube and click uh, the, not the videos link, but the playlist link, there's a playlist called Prayer Week 2022. Go back and watch those videos again. Share them with people and let them know that this stuff is out there. Neighborhood Prayer Network, is a family, which means we like to give stuff away. We don't hold this to ourselves. So maybe tomorrow for Neighbour Sunday in your church and in your community, maybe you need to just share this with whoever God prompts you. But it's about being intentional. That's what Neighbour Sunday is all about. It's about being intentional. We've got previous year's material there available as well. So just go back and anything that you think would bless uh, Christians that you know, your church family, or indeed anybody, share it share it signpost it shine a light on it that's what uh, neighbor sunday is all about so that's taking place tomorrow and then we've got some a, another video that i'm doing uh, early tomorrow morning so that'll be available uh, but so come and join me tomorrow and lisa and i'll be back praying uh, tomorrow night but uh, thank you so much to everybody who has engaged if god has said anything to you drop an email uk director at neighborhoodprayer.net UK director at neighbourhoodprayer.net. We'd love to know what God's been saying so that Lisa and I can continue to pray. And if you've got other further things that you think we should be doing as a response to the cost of living crisis, then get in touch with us. Lisa, 
Thank you so much. Uh, Pastor Tunde has gone by. I do want to, even though he's not here, thank Pastor Tunde uh, for, for speaking into this conversation. But Lisa, thank you so much for everything that you've done all week. It's been a pleasure and a privilege as always to spend probably more hours than we normally spend together. Although, And we do spend a good number of hours together each week, but we've doubled that this week. So it's been really a privilege to uh, to, to take time. And I, I just want to, as, as UK director, thank you for all the hard work that you've done this week. Uh, thank you. And to everybody else who's engaged this week, thank you too. May God bless you in the rest of this day. And I hope to see some of you tonight at 7.30 for our time of prayer when we'll be praying around the issues of housing and homelessness. And don't forget the lunchtime conversation, 12.30, my conversation with Rory from Green Pastures. Have a really good rest of your day. God bless.